So a new study came out and it was talking about this artificial sweetener xylitol and its potential to increase your risk for heart disease. Now you might recall a similar study came on a different artificial sweetener called erythritol. And I actually made a different video on that as well. I'm gonna put a link in the description below if you wanna watch that. But the main thing they measured in this study was they took blood samples of people and they measured how much xylitol was in their blood. And they were comparing that amount of xylitol in their blood in relation to heart disease. Now this is a key point here. So the study's findings are based on circulating levels of xylitol in the blood. They were not based on how much xylitol people ingested. So you can probably find a flaw here already, but just because someone has higher levels of xylitol in their blood, it doesn't mean that they actually ingested more xylitol because xylitol is naturally produced in our own body. So again, they were not measuring xylitol intake or the xylitol that people eat. They were just measuring the concentrations in people's blood. Now, the second thing to note here is the cohort that they used or the population that they used in the study was already pretty unhealthy. So they had an average age of 64 years old and 22% of the population had diabetes. Also, 72% of the population had high blood pressure and 76% of the population had a history of heart disease. And also 76% had a history of coronary artery disease. And 46% of the population that they studied had a history of a previous heart attack. Now the study was making some pretty big claims and this is what a lot of the media out there is saying, but basically that having higher levels of xylitol in the blood was strongly associated with having a higher risk of heart disease. But once they started controlling for a lot of these confounding variables, then the relative risk for getting heart disease went way down. It was still higher if you had more xylitol, but the risk was way down. Now I did wanna mention they did do one part in the study where they gave participants a xylitol drink that had 30 grams of xylitol in it. What they found can seem a little scary at first. So they found that it actually increased xylitol concentrations in the blood by 1,000 times. But what they left out was that xylitol has a very short half-life. It's not like caffeine where it sticks around for a long time. Xylitol is cleared out of your body really quickly. It's completely cleared out within 24 hours, but some studies even say that it's completely cleared out within two hours. But I think the whole point of this is kind of irrelevant to the study because when you look again at the study, all the people were fasting. So they were measuring fasting xylitol levels, meaning they weren't measuring xylitol concentrations that people ate because all of that would have been cleared out of their body. They were measuring concentrations in people's plasma of xylitol when they didn't eat any xylitol. So instead, what I think this study is really showing is these people were unhealthy to begin with. We already saw the whole cohort that these people had a history of heart disease and also previous heart attacks. So how can you assume that they are going to have healthy hearts when they're unhealthy in the first place. I think that the higher levels of xylitol in the blood were just a mere byproduct of them being unhealthy. It's something called reverse causation. These people were, again, already unhealthy. They had heart disease in the first place, and they could have a messed up metabolism because of being so unhealthy. So one explanation could be that maybe it was a xylitol in their diet, but instead of digesting it really quickly and getting it out of their system like xylitol is supposed to be, their metabolism could be really slow and it could still stick around. Or having more xylitol is just simply a byproduct of being unhealthy. We don't really know for sure. So my take home is this, if you're already unhealthy and you already have a history of heart disease, you probably don't wanna eat too much xylitol. But if you're already a healthy person and you use a xylitol sweetener as a substitute for sugar and you feel like it does really good for you, I probably wouldn't look too much into the study because you can also make an argument that xylitol is better. Xylitol has a much lower glycemic index, meaning it doesn't spike your blood sugar or your insulin, meaning it could potentially be better for your heart, especially if you're at risk for diabetes. Also, xylitol has a lot of dental benefits that we didn't even get into. I actually wanna make a whole separate video talking more about this, but in general, xylitol is so good for your teeth because it's the only sugar alcohol out there that actually prevents cavities. Every single other sugar alcohol, and sugar included, actually will 
cause cavities to some degree. Now, technically it's not the sugar itself that causes cavities because it's really the sugar that feeds the bacteria in your mouth and the bacteria in turn secrete a byproduct that's acidic, this lactic acid that will actually damage your teeth and cause cavities. But xylitol doesn't do that. Xylitol will actually inhibit this and actually prevent cavities from forming in your teeth. So I think using a xylitol gum is a great idea, especially if you wanna have healthy teeth and especially after you're eating. Because when you eat, let's say a bunch of carbohydrates, all these can stick around and cause cavities. But if you pop in a piece of xylitol gum, one that saliva will start to flow in and help clean away all these carbs, but also that xylitol will further prevent getting cavities. And the other thing is, the amount of xylitol in gum is so little, it's only like one gram, compared to the 30 grams they were talking about in the study. Xylitol also has good uses as a nasal spray. So there's this nasal spray called Clear, it's spelled X-L-E-A-R, and the xylitol in here is really cool because it's one, a surfactant, and also an antifungal, and also an antibacterial. Meaning it works very well to kind of disrupt all this mucus and sinus pressure that you have, and it can really clear everything out, and also prevent ear infections. Xylitol is also found in toothpaste, which I think is still beneficial, and also in a lot of mouthwashes. So if you're just using xylitol for your dental purposes, which really that's what I use it for, then I think you should not take anything away from the study, even if you have heart disease. Because one, the amount of xylitol in these dental products is really low, but also two, the benefits you get really I think outweigh all the risks. We always hear about foods to avoid when it comes to preventing cavities. We know we need to avoid candy, we need to avoid those refined carbohydrates, those starchy foods, those acidic foods, because those acidic foods will lower the pH in your mouth and weaken your teeth. And also we wanna avoid sticky foods, those foods that stick into those 